Hi, Dr. Dave here. Many people over the years have asked me to do a video on how to care for a pool cue, balls, and table. Well, here it is. If you enjoy or benefit from this video, please click on the thumbs up like button to show your support. And to make sure you don't miss any future videos, subscribe to my channel and turn on bell notifications. Basically, to take care of your cue, just keep it clean and chalk the tip regularly. If you use a shooting glove, the shaft will automatically stay cleaner. You are also more likely to get a consistent feel on every shot. Before or after every use, or any time it feels dirty, wipe the shaft with a damp towel. Notice how I'm careful to not get the tip wet, as I twist the cue to clean the ferrule and the part of the shaft close to the tip. Then I wipe the remainder of the cue. You should also rub it dry. If you have a wood shaft that is really dirty like this, use a damp piece of magic eraser. That will usually remove most of the dirt and stains, and it won't abrade the soft wood grain. If you want to remove more dirt and stains, you can use a scouring pad or fine grit sandpaper, although these will wear down the shaft slightly, especially the soft parts of the grain. When you are done with deep cleaning, it is a good idea to burnish the shaft, either with a dollar bill or with a piece of raw leather. Here, I'm using the back side of a leather coaster, but you can also use the inside of a leather belt. Burnishing helps seal the grain and provides a smooth and shiny finish. Here are the before and after pictures of the shaft. Cleaning and burnishing can really restore a filthy and scratched up cue. If you use a carbon fiber shaft, it doesn't need much care. You can just wipe it down with a damp towel. If that doesn't get it completely clean and smooth, you can use a little dishwashing liquid, in which case you should also clean the grip, which tends to get dirtier. Just be sure to wipe off all the soap residue with a clean and damp towel. If the shaft is really dirty and oily, you can use rubbing alcohol to make it squeaky clean. Again, if you want to keep your shaft clean, use a playing glove. The shaft will stay clean for a long time using a glove. Have you ever had a shot like this with a funny sound? This is usually caused by the joint not being tightened enough. Always make sure the joint is tight before you play, and check it periodically when playing, especially after a funny sounding hit or before a power shot. Don't slap balls around with the cue. This can cause dings in a wooden shaft. Don't slam the cue against the table or other people's cues. This can cause dings and scratches. You don't need to shape a tip unless the top flattens. This is less a concern with a harder tip, which will also last longer. I often use the same hard tip for years without needing to shape or scuff it. Shaping and scuffing wears the tip down faster, requiring more frequent replacement. But shaping and scuffing can restore a tip when necessary. There are many tools available for this purpose. There is no need to scuff a tip unless it is no longer holding chalk. Chalking with a typical abrasive chalk naturally keeps the tip surface in good shape, unless you miscue a lot. It is best to have the tip rounded to the diameter of a US nickel or dime. If your tip is flatter than this, you can use a shaper tool to make it round again. This is my favorite tool for this purpose. Be sure to shake and tap out the debris periodically during use. Sometimes the tip surface will end up a little rough, especially in the center after shaping. This really isn't a concern, but you can use fine grit sandpaper to smooth it down if you want. When you are done, chalk up the tip and you're ready to play. Here are the before and after pictures of the tip. 
Do not use cosmetic style chalks that go on the tip smoothly like lipstick. Because they go on smoothly without any abrasion, they don't keep the tip surface fresh. They also stick to the cue ball too easily, which can cause more frequent and larger cling, also known as skid or kick. Otherwise, the type and brand of chalk you use really doesn't matter much in terms of performance. For more information, see the videos on the Chalk Comparison resource page linked in the video description. Anytime you miscue, the tip will have a skid mark that can cause another bad hit in the future. Always be sure to scuff that spot carefully with aggressive chalking, or if necessary with a scuffer tool or fine grit sandpaper. The only times you need to replace a tip is when it no longer holds chalk even after scuffing, gets damaged or the glue joint fails, or when it wears down to the point when there is very little material remaining on the shoulder of the ferrule. See the link in the video description if you want to learn how to replace a tip yourself. If you use a hard tip, chalk properly, and resist scuffing or reshaping your tip, unless it is absolutely necessary, a tip can last a long time, even several years with regular use. Don't lean against or sit on the table when not shooting. Don't put your full weight on the table or get up on the table. There is actually a real rule that requires at least one foot be touching the floor while shooting. Don't put food, drinks, or anything else on the table. Don't put chalk on the rail face down. Chalk is abrasive and can scratch the rail. It makes a mess, and your opponent will expect it to be face up. Don't use excessive talc from a powder bottle or talc cone. You don't really need talc with an open bridge. And if you use a closed bridge in a human environment, use a billiard glove instead. Don't chalk over the table. This gets chalk debris on the cloth, which can affect a slow rolling ball. Don't eat messy food while playing, and keep your hands clean. What? I got ball in hand? Table brushing is not generally recommended since it makes a cloud that is probably not healthy to breathe, and it settles on everything. But if you don't plan to vacuum, the brush is a fast and easy option for getting chalk and dust off the top surface. Just be sure to vacuum or shake out the brush first before using it on a table. The longer end bristles allow you to easily get under the cushions. You should vacuum and wipe the table daily with heavy use, weekly with moderate use, and monthly with light use. A small portable vacuum with a hose attachment and bristle brush is the easiest to use. It is good to vacuum spots that look extra dirty first. Then vacuum the tops of the cushions. Then vacuum under the cushions and along the rail grooves where dirt and dust like to collect. Then vacuum the whole table, one quadrant at a time. It is generally recommended to vacuum and later wipe in the same direction toward the foot rail, as compared to rubbing back and forth, but this really isn't a concern with modern, high-quality cloths. If you are lazy or have many tables to clean, you might prefer using a Roomba vacuuming robot. You just need to push a button to get it started, and it automatically vacuums the entire table. The rotating bristle brush also gets under the cushions very well. And it even lets you know when it's finished. After brushing or vacuuming, wipe the table down with a damp cloth. It is best to use a microfiber cloth, but a cotton cloth works fine as long as you pick up any lint left behind. The cloth should only be damp, and it should not drip when you wring it. First wipe any spots that look extra dirty. Then wipe the rails. Then wipe the cushions. Then wipe the whole table, one quadrant at a time. It is a good idea to use a spare piece of cloth as a breaking pad, especially if you are practicing the break. Without the break cloth, you will create permanent burn or skid marks on the tablecloth. Also use a spare piece of cloth if practicing jump or masse shots. Music 
As with the break, burn or skid marks will appear on the spare piece of cloth and not on the tablecloth. The other approach is to just not worry about the burn or skid marks on the cloth. They are a natural part of the game and just show that you play a lot. A table cover is a good idea, especially if the table is in a dusty environment or if you have pets or young kids. A cover will keep the table much cleaner and you won't need to vacuum or wipe it as often. If the table does get lint or pet hair on it, an adhesive lint roller can be very effective at removing it. Even though I don't have any pets, my hairy arms sometimes shed onto the table. Don't hit object balls directly with the cue. Chalk marks on the balls can lead to more frequent fling, also known as skid or kick. Notice the cue ball hop and loss of topspin. It is a good idea to wipe the balls with a damp cloth whenever they seem dirty or after heavy use. You can use the same towel you use to wipe the table. During play, especially after power shots, the balls can get marks on them. You should clean these off anytime you have ball in hand or before racking for a new game. The power shot left a big chalk mark on the cue ball and a leather mark on the 9 from hitting the back leather liner of the pocket. These can easily be cleaned off by scraping with a wet fingernail. You should also clean all the balls anytime they look dirty or have lost their shine. You can use a commercially available ball cleaning machine, especially if you own a pool hall with lots of tables, but it is easy enough to do by hand. It is best to use a cleaning product specifically formulated for pool balls, like Aramith Ball Cleaner. If you don't use a proper cleaning product, playing performance will be affected. See the link in the video description for more information and demonstrations. Be sure to shake the cleaner first. Then apply a drop or two to each ball. Then wipe and rub the entire ball surface by applying pressure and rotating with both hands. Washing the towel and your hands when you are done gives the balls more time to dry completely. Before buffing, the balls will not look very shiny. Buff the balls with a clean and dry cotton or microfiber cloth. When you are done, the balls will be very clean and shiny, ready for some top-notch play. I hope you found something helpful in this video. If so, please click on the thumbs up like button to show your support. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on bell notifications so you won't miss any future videos. FYI, I already have a library of over 400 videos in my channel, so if you haven't seen much of them yet, do some catch-up homework with some binge-watching. If you want more information about any topic in this video, you can find it via the resource pages linked in the video description. Good luck with your game, from Dr. Dave.